Um, hi, it's me, the supportive boyfriend in a female-led superhero movie. Oh, and babe, one more thing. Go kick his ass. In 2012, David Mullins and Charlie Craig walked into Masterpiece Cake Shop in Lakewood, Colorado, with the intention of ordering a custom cake to celebrate their upcoming marriage. But the shop's owner, Jack Phillips, upon learning the cake would be to commemorate a same-sex marriage, declined, claiming that as a Christian, creating a cake for them would go against his faith. Mullins and Craig later sued the shop for discriminating against them based on sexual orientation. In Colorado, administrative court, the couple won, but Phillips eventually took the case to the Supreme Court, which ruled in his favor, agreeing that refusing to bake a cake for a same-sex couple fell under the First Amendment's freedom of religion. Now, if I told you that there was a 2023 film inspired by this story, and asked you who you thought the main characters of the movie are, the protagonists who we, the audience, follow throughout the movie, whose plight we're supposed to resonate with, if you're a normal person, you'd probably get Yes, it's the gay couple who were discriminated against solely based on who they were getting married to. But in reality, A Taste of Praise, as it's titled, is a Christian movie, so its hero is the Christian baker who heroically exercised his God-given right to not fraternize with those hedonistic homosexuals. Will this movie somehow get me to sympathize with a main character that hates gay people? I mean, no, but I'm very excited to see it try. So in the movie, the baker is a family man named Danny Marcotte who bakes a cake to celebrate his daughter Mackenzie's dance recital. Break it open! And just a heads up, all the imagery of cakes in this movie is really gonna make you want some yourself. Like, I don't even know how I got this. I just blacked out and came to in the bakery with this in my hand and all the employees' corpses on the floor with their throats slit. I really hope none of them had families. Also, can't help but notice Danny has a tattoo, something the Bible also condemns as sinful. He's no better than the queers. See you in hell, buddy. He also has a younger daughter, Jess. We then see Danny's actual bakery and meet his employees, Abigail, who barely talks, hey, Welcome to Innovation Cakes, how can I help you? And Ruben, who's like Danny's right-hand man. Now listen, I would never claim to have perfect gaydar, but I do find it interesting that both of them are setting mine off a little bit. Look man, sorry I had to call you, but I'm falling behind and this thing's been acting up for like the last few days. I think it's a reversing switch? Am I wrong? I could be wrong. The next day, while at Jess's basketball game, Danny agrees to make a custom wedding cake for the daughter of a family friend. Oh, 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 and by the way, your Jessie, she is an all-star, I tell you what. Yeah, she's an all-star at basketball. I just need to do the gestures so you know which sport I'm talking about. Eventually, the gay couple named Frank and William in the movie enter Danny's shop. Hello, I am Frank Fullerton with Advanced Creative Designs. Nice to meet you, Frank. And I'm William Park. I'm an accountant at the Stellis Prospect and Park. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, you must, uh, you must know my wife, Anna Marcotte. She's oh, uh, the yeah. admin to the COO. Man, it's a good thing that they both randomly announced their professions out loud like freaks so Danny could learn that one of them works with his wife. So they request a custom cake. Great, okay, so what's the occasion? Well, it's a wedding between two humans that are madly in love. So Frank and William together forever. forever. Why did they give a slow build up to the answer like that instead of just saying it's our wedding like normal people? I could very well be overanalyzing here, but it almost seems like the movie's trying to frame it like they're anticipating Danny being homophobic because they knew he was a Christian and targeted his business with the intent of getting rejected and suing him. Again, I could be overthinking, but I would not put it past this movie to frame the couple that way. Anyway, Danny, of course, man of faith that he is, rejects their request. Why? Uh, it's just, I, I don't do custom cakes for same-sex couples. <laughs> Explain yourself. It's, uh, it's just an agreement that I made with God. Now, I know there are gonna be a lot of people commenting on this video defending the actions of both the character Danny and the real guy he's based on, saying that he's well within his legal right to refuse service to them. Supreme Court even said so! To which I'd say, 
So, you know what else is technically legal? Uh, taking a shit on your kitchen floor and leaving it there. Doesn't make it any less freak behavior. The fact is, this guy's turning away paying customers because he doesn't believe their union is something that should be celebrated. And to me, that makes him a dick, thus okay to make fun of. Hearing this, Frank and William immediately threatened to sue Danny in, of course, the most sinister way possible. Listen. Make the cake. I'm going to sue your silly little butt all the way to your high flute in heaven. Will you please reconsider? He's got a lot of influence. Because they're literally the villains of the movie. Why doesn't he just go to another baker? Because a lawsuit against me is much more tasty. Damn, that was kind of a good line. Whoa, what's this, a dance party? I'm in. Me in kindergarten when one of my classmates had a seizure. So he explains to his wife the situation, asking if he should just bake the cake to avoid the lawsuit. But she supports his decision to not. Then in the next scene, we're introduced to this weird subplot where the older daughter Mackenzie has her role in the school play taken away and given to someone else. Mr. Atwood changed his mind. He gave the role of Ophelia to Stephanie. He said it's time for equity and diversity to take center stage. Whatever that means. Well, honey, maybe he's right. But a grave digger? But I'm fairly certain this subplot has no basis in the reality of the case and was just included so the writers could air out another grievance they have with the woke left, which is that with all this affirmative action bullshit, people keep getting hired for things just because they feel some diversity quota and not because they're the white, I mean, sorry, the, the right person for the job. This is something that right-wingers complain about all the time. Wow, that's great. The pilot was chosen because of their skin color. Which kind of gives the impression that they can't fathom any situation where the most qualified person for a job isn't white. At home, Danny's wife informs him that Frank and William filed an official complaint about him to the Civil Rights Commission. Stressed, Danny puts on a record and has dreams of his family. You see, he loves his family, so he's allowed to be a bigot. At the bakery the next day, he finds one of the company vans has been vandalized. With icing! Bake this hater. Danny? You all right? No. Then there's a scene where Danny's at an old couple's anniversary that he baked the custom cake for, and uh, why is he there? Is that common practice for the baker of a cake to be invited to the party? That'd be like if party clowns had to be accompanied by their abusive father who didn't hit them when he was laughing. Danny even plays piano for everyone. Look at all the joy Danny brings to people with his cakes. He doesn't deserve all the bad things that have been happening to him. I've had better. <laughs> ha! Can't go wrong with a sarcastic old timer like this guy. Danny then meets with a lawyer who advises him to stop making any custom wedding cakes while the trial's going on. So the next day when the friend comes in hoping to have one made for her daughter, who looks like Candace from Phineas and Ferb, he has to refuse them and they storm out. Jenna, come on. I... I would not put money on that matrimony. Reuben just seems a little zesty. I'm just saying. The story of the lawsuit begins to spread around town. Mackenzie's rehearsals are even canceled because her woke director wants to attend a civil rights celebration that's happening. A piece of information we're told twice back to back for some reason. She says rehearsals are canceled. Uh, Atwood's going to a, a civil rights celebration downtown. Atwood even cut rehearsals so he could go to a gay pride meeting to celebrate. There's then an insane scene where Danny drives by Frank and William just having drinks with their friends and kind of just sighs. Oh, what has the world come to? They're letting them outside now? He then meets with his pastor to discuss his concerns about how the lawsuit is affecting his family. She's also moving to Los Angeles to study acting, so 
You know, this whole thing won't look great on her resume. It's okay, after Mackenzie's fired from whatever show she's on, she'll be able to make a whole new career as a conservative influencer famously canceled by woke mainstream Hollywood, and it won't be pathetic or sad at all. Then at rehearsal, we see the girl who Mackenzie's role was given to supposedly because of diversity and inclusion, and she's clearly less talented than Mackenzie. Wiles, like a puffed and reckless libertine, himself the primrose path of Dalian's treads and wrecks not his own reed. But she also looks to me like another white girl? So what makes her a diversity hire in this movie's eyes? Is she supposed to be gay? I guess that makes sense because this movie's whole beef is with gays. But are they really trying to act like there's some big epidemic in this country of gays taking jobs away from more qualified straights? These people are so delusional. No fair, guys. We want some oppression, too. On a break, the director, who I guess is boycotting Danny's Bakery, passes out some store-bought cupcakes that everyone agrees are nowhere near as tasty as Danny's. I wish your dad was perfect. It was shock. Thanks. I'll let him know. Then Mackenzie's friend makes a whole scene out of how bad they are that I think is supposed to be funny, but it's uh, just so hard to watch. It was the poison's cupcake. It's too late. <coughs> I'm not feeling it. I am justly killed with my own treachery. Gianni, cut out. <sighs> that might be the most uncomfortable thing I've ever had to watch, and I've watched the boys with my parents. Ovation cakes? Yeah, if you holy rollers don't make cakes for gay people, you're done. They said if we don't make cakes for same-sex couples, they're gonna kill the business. A death threat? Was it a death threat? He just said you're done. Yeah, if you holy rollers don't make cakes for gay people, you're done. And like, this is a movie. They could have written it to be a death threat. Later, when protesters arrive outside the bakery, Mackenzie falls down. I don't think anyone pushes her or anything. She just kind of trips. Shut it down! Shut it down! Did anything like this happen to the daughter of the real baker, you might ask? Not that I could find. In fact, the real guy is much older than Danny seems to be in the movie. So I wouldn't be surprised if the whole subplot of this being really hard on his young daughters was fabricated for the movie. With everything going down, Ruben has a question for Danny. Just a cake. I mean, why don't we just make it for them? You're fired. Get the fuck out of my bakery. If I used the gift that God gave me to express something that goes against his word, then I'm, I'm turning my back on it. Does, does that make sense? I guess a, a cake isn't just a cake, no. It's never been about the cake. That's exactly what I'll say to my future spouse in case they're ever worried about me leaving them for someone with a bigger ass. It's, it's never, never been, been about, about the cake. cake. The next day at church, Danny speaks to the congregation about the lawsuit. And uh, I want to thank all of you for supporting our family in prayer and buying our cakes. <laughs> Man, this guy loved that joke. Aha! Uh -huh, it's true. We do buy his cakes. One's ice cream. Oh. Sure, Mom. Just as long as it's not rainbow, Sherbert. You're doing the hard thing by standing up for what you believe in. That really inspired me. Hmm. Actually, kind of been working on a new song. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it goes like this. Hate, hate, hate the gays like God, I hate the gays. They will suffer for who they are with an eternity in flames. Danny and his wife then leave for the trial in DC and the next morning, Jess sees some breaking news on TV. Oh my goodness! A decision Mac! has been reached. Mac! The case dealt with whether owners of public- Mac! They just hit the South Tower! No, it's of course that, just like in real life, Danny won the trial, meaning the lawsuit won't go through. Later, they celebrate the victory with this cringy freedom cake. How about this cake over here? Woo! <laughs> yeah. oh, that's right there, these two. Uh, who has a knife? Does anybody have it? Oh, there he is, Reuben with the knife. Reuben with the knife. If there's one thing I know about that guy, Reuben, he's Always got a fucking knife. Anyway, then the credits roll and Danny takes a goofy bite of cake that like <laughs> really bothers me for some reason. I don't like it. So that was a taste of praise, but all I taste is, is that mischaracterizing actual events? And a hint of Christian fundamentalism. And is that 
The Christian persecution complex? Somebody grab my EpiPen because I'm allergic to all that. So that was another dumb movie made by dumb people whose closed-minded worldview will hopefully die out in a couple decades. And by that, I'm referring to, um, homophobic people, not necessarily Christians in general. All right? Cool your jets. Anyway, I gotta go finish this cake, so bye.